Welcome everyone, I'm Barry Johnson, Director of Business Development with Viking. We'd like to thank you for watching our segment on Mississippi River cruising. The Mississippi River, it's massive. It stretches from north to south, some 2,300 miles from Minnesota all the way to Gulf of Mexico. This cross-country trip really allows you to be immersed in American history and culture. You'll step on board the newest and most modern ship on the Mississippi. It has all outside staterooms, private verandas, spacious public areas, and our signature clean Scandinavian design, all reimagined for the Mississippi River. All of our inclusive values that you're used to at Viking will be available for you. And the one that I like the most is our included tour in every port of call. This included tour is picked for you as a great overview of that port that you're in for that day. I'm gonna describe this itinerary day by day, talk about that included tour, and then maybe give you uh, some ideas of the optional excursions that will be available for you to, to choose to do by, by purchasing those from Viking. This is America's Great River. That's the itinerary we'll be talking about today. This is our north to south itinerary from the top of the river to the bottom. History and culture just unfold as you go from north to south on this huge voyage. It's 15 days. You're gonna enjoy relaxing scenic sailing, unparalleled bird watching. You'll move from the bluffs of the north to the bayous of the south. You'll learn about the American Civil Rights Movement. You'll learn about the American Civil War. Along the way, you'll get to tap your fleet to the rhythm of American music, and that's folk, soul, and jazz music that all come from this area of the country. And then you'll get to taste a delicious array of regional cuisine. We have regional cuisine on board the vessel for you, as well as always available American classics. And then of course, when you're out in ports of call, take time to sample some of the local specialties. This itinerary is also offered in the reverse direction. So your travel advisor may give you an option to head from New Orleans up to St. Paul. For today's presentation, I'll be covering this in the direction from St. Paul to New Orleans. You'll visit seven states along the way, starting of course in Minnesota, then sailing on to Wisconsin, Iowa, Missouri, Tennessee, Mississippi, and finally Louisiana. You'll arrive in St. Paul. This is where you embark your ship, settle into your stateroom, and then you'll have the entire afternoon to explore. St. Paul is where the Mississippi and Minnesota rivers meet. St. Paul welcomed its first settlers in 1838. A decade later, it was already the capital of the Minnesota Territory. By 1858, there were some 1,000 steamboats that frequented what was known as the last city of the East, and that's the eastern part of the country. Everything to the west of St. Paul was the frontier. Today, St. Paul is a very modern metropolis, and it is the capital of Minnesota. The city's historic residential districts feature late 19th and early 20th century mansions along tree-lined streets for you to enjoy on a wonderful stroll. Day two of our journey will find us in Red Wing, Minnesota. Red Wing is known for its Red Wing shoes. This is the company that made boots for our soldiers, sailors, and airmen during World War I and World War II. The city itself was named for a Sioux chief who carried around a red dyed swan wing to show his rank within the tribe. Settlers arrived in the mid 1800s, New Englanders first, followed by German, Irish, and Scandinavian immigrants. Our included tour today is going to feature downtown Red Wing in the Eagle Center. At the Eagle Center, you're going to get to see American bald eagles and golden eagles up close and learn all about them. There are 26 museums in the downtown area. It also abounds with galleries, cafes, and shops. An optional excursion that's available here is the Red Wing Pottery Museum. This area of the country is known for its pottery, and you'll visit the Pottery Museum where you'll learn more about it and even have a hands-on experience to make some of your own pottery. A third and final optional excursion that's available here is an apple cidery tour and tasting. You're gonna head out to the Maiden Rock Farm. This orchard is a place where they grow apples and create a wonderful non-alcoholic cider that you'll be able to sample. They'll walk through the entire process of agriculture here, which is a microclimate that's perfect for growing apples, tell you all about that, and then you'll get to sample some of their, their wonderful cider.
Day three will find us in La Crosse, Wisconsin. La Crosse has a really deep connection to Norway. Viking, we are a, a Norwegian-owned company. Here, a Norwegian immigrant population has created a really unique culture over several generations. La Crosse today boasts numerous sites on the National Register of Historic Places, and it feels like a vast open-air museum. Our included tour is called Rivertown Discovery. It gives you a chance to see the best of La Crosse from top to bottom. We're going to head up to a high bluff that allows you, on a clear day, to see three states. We'll visit downtown historical locations like the St. Rose Convent, as well as the Hickson House, a 19th century home full of things that this lumber baron who owned this home collected from his journeys all over the world. Afterwards, you'll have an opportunity to stroll the downtown area that is home to plentiful shops and restaurants. We do have a privileged access optional excursion you could choose to do here when we are docked in La Crosse, and that's to head over to Decorah, Iowa, and to visit the Festerheim Museum. The Vesterheim Museum is the National Norwegian American Museum. It's nestled among the rolling hills there of Decorah, Iowa. Uh, you will visit this museum that has over 33,000 artifacts, 12 historic buildings, a folk art school and library. And in the museum, you'll learn all about the history of, of American immigration and its influence on the Midwest. Day four will find us in Dubuque, Iowa. Timber and boat building were central to the growth of this city right on the Mississippi. Today, the city's praise for its livability and its riverside developments. Our included tour is historic Dubuque in the National Mississippi River Museum and Aquarium. You'll see Dubuque's main site, explore its historic downtown, learn about its history, culture, and more. Then we'll head over to the National Mississippi River Museum and Aquarium. It's World-renowned, interactive displays, five aquariums, and numerous exhibits will help you learn all about the Mississippi River and its history and the wildlife that abounds up and down the river. We do offer an optional excursion that gives you a guided immersion at the National Mississippi River Museum and Aquarium. This takes you even deeper. You'll get to go behind the scene, see some of the conservation methods and spaces that are reserved for endangered species that are being preserved and, and being brought back by the work of the museum and aquarium. An optional excursion here is also Frank Lloyd Wright's Telesian. This is a modern architectural masterpiece. Telesian served as the architect's private residence, studio, and school from 1911 until his death in 1959, and it is a National Historic Landmark. You'll see the example of his style that was really ahead of his time. And our last optional excursion is Field of Dreams, an American story. If you build it, they will come. It gives you a chance to drive through scenic Iowa to the farmland that was the set of the wonderful film Field of Dreams that's all about Americana and baseball. You'll step back in time, see some of the movie props that are still part of the home today. You'll even have a historic baseball player walk out of the cornfield to talk with you and, and maybe even pay a little, little pitch. You'll also get to visit a local craft brewery on this tour. Day five finds us in Quad Cities, Iowa. Today, the Quad Cities rest amid the fertile farmland where the Mississippi and Rock Rivers meet. This area is known as America's Breadbasket. The nation's most expansive and scenic agricultural region is all abounding out from this spot of the Mississippi and it is home for agribusiness giants that include John Deere. And that's our included tour. We're going to head to the John Deere Pavilion and the John Deere home, and you'll discover the, the machinery that actually made America the farmland that it is today. And now that machinery, of course, is sold worldwide. You'll see the Deere family home and see all of their inventions at this fantastic collection of, of memorabilia, farm equipment, and technology. An optional excursion is to visit the Putnam Museum. This is where you can learn about Native American heritage. The Putnam is Davenport, Iowa's premier natural history and science museum. This is a privileged access tour where you'll actually have the curator of the museum take you through a guided section of a very special exhibit called River, Prairie, and People. And you'll learn about the museum's collection of artifacts from the time period of the American West as immigration and movement westward was causing friction with the Native Americans in the region. 
The Iowa Farm Visit. This is an optional excursion here too, a chance to visit Cinnamon Ridge. This is a family run Midwestern farm. It's been in the same family for five generations and you'll get to learn how they sustainably produce milk, beef, pork, and soybeans. After the tour, you'll get to enjoy Cinnamon Ridge cheese tasting, some cheese that's from the, the milk from the cows right there on the farm. They'll pair that with some local beers and wines followed by some free time to explore. We have some active excursions available here in Quad Cities. You might choose to do kayaking on the Rock River, or you may choose to do bicycling. Day six will find us in Burlington, Iowa. The U.S. flag was first raised over Iowa in Burlington in 1805 by Lieutenant Zebulon Pike. This was during his Mississippi River explorations. It quickly became a fur trade outpost, and then a major port during the steamboat era. Today, the city is home to many magnificent buildings that are on the National Register of Historic Places, including the Art Deco Capitol Theater and the Gothic Revival St. Paul's Church. Our included tour will take us through historic Burlington. This is really the best of small town America. You'll experience American life with a guided tour of this really charming city. The Des Moines County Heritage Center is in the former Gothic Revival style library. You'll visit that. You'll learn about Bur Burlington's railroad heritage and its role today as one of America's largest railroad depots. We'll head back to the ship and on the way you'll see Snake Alley. This has been named by Ripley's Believe It or Not as the world's most crooked street and you'll see why in person. An optional excursion here would be to visit Old Fort Madison. You can really step back in time at the Upper Mississippi's oldest military garrison. This outpost was active from 1808 to 1813, and it was the first permanent U.S. military fortification on the Upper Mississippi. You'll visit the cemetery there where there are 22 soldiers buried along with an unknown number of civilians and also Native Americans. There are many artifacts, items that were retrieved in archaeological digs of the fort itself. You'll also see a flintlock musket loading and firing demonstration. Day seven finds us in Hannibal, Missouri. Hannibal is the childhood home of Samuel Langhorne Clemens, better known, of course, as Mark Twain. This town was the inspiration for his works, Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn. Our included tour is going to take you through the footsteps of Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn. We'll see the sights of this town that inspired Mark Twain to write these wonderful novels. We'll see the white picket fence that he had to whitewash, uh, at least that Tom Sawyer had to, to whitewash as well, which is uh, inspired by his own whitewashing of this fence. You'll see the museum gallery and admire 15 original Norman Rockwell paintings that all depict the scenes from Twain's novel. The books really do come to life as you walk through Hannibal, Missouri. Day eight finds us in St. Louis, Missouri. During the 19th century, St. Louis was a gateway into the Louisiana territory. Today, it's home to rich architectural treasures. Among them, the Cathedral Basilica of St. Louis with its 41 million piece mosaic, the Renaissance Revival City Hall, the 19th century old courthouse, and of course the Gateway Arch. St. Louis is also our first stop for great barbecue, home of St. Louis style ribs that are served thick with sauce. We've got a sample of those, some of those while you're in town. Our included tour is called Gateway to the West and it gives you a, a chance to become acquainted with St. Louis and all of those, those architectural gems that I mentioned before as well as the the Ark. We'll also visit the St. Louis Will, Union Station, Bush Stadium, and many other landmarks that are in the area. St. Louis was home to a really thriving immigrant population. You'll uh, pass through Lafayette Square and you'll see Victorian homes from the 19th century. These were owned by German, French, and Italian residents, and they've been lovingly restored. An optional excursion here is Anheuser-Busch Brewery. This is one of America's oldest brewery. The grounds actually include three locations, buildings that are on the National Historic Landmark. The brewery is in a neighborhood that was full of immigrants and the location was chosen 
by the families that founded Anheuser-Busch because it was wonderful access, of course, to the Mississippi River, the large presence of German immigrants in the area, and the natural cave formations where the beer could be stored, natural refrigeration, if you will. You'll learn the history of beer brewing in America, and through the stories of the Anheuser and the Bush families, you'll gain insight into lives of the St. Louis 18th century German immigrant community that lived here. There'll be a beer tasting. You'll get to see the Clydesdales, the Beechwood Aging Cellars, as well as the historic brew house. The National Blues Museum is another optional excursion here in St. Louis. This museum features acclaimed interactive displays. They're gonna teach you all about the blues. And the blues are considered the foundation for all modern American music. Day nine is scenic cruising. It's an opportunity to enjoy the beautiful landscapes as we're traveling between St. Louis and Memphis. There's bird life, picturesque landscapes, deep green forests, lush wetlands, fertile farmlands. The lure Mississippi just abounds with natural beauty. This will be a day to enjoy the views from perhaps the Explorer's Lounge or the top to a deck where we have our Aquavit Terrace and River Cafe. You'll get to sample some regional cuisine that we are, our chefs are preparing for you there in the restaurant, as well as those locations up on the top of the ship. Maybe enjoy the plunge pool as we are sailing down the Mississippi. Day 10 finds us in Memphis. This is situated on the Chickasaw Bluffs that overlook the Mississippi River. Memphis, of course, is known for its blues music and its barbecue. Some of the most famed names in blues, including B.B. King, all got their start right here in Memphis. It's also celebrated as a culinary heritage and renowned for the traditional barbecue restaurants that serve flavorful dry rub ribs with the sauce on the side. You can add the sauce, which is a little spicier than what we found up in St. Louis. You can add that to the ribs as you would like. The city's really rich in history, culture, and of course, food. Our included tour in Memphis is the Deluxe Graceland. This is a chance to visit the fabled estate of Elvis Presley. This is a rock and roll pilgrimage. You're gonna walk through the famous gate with its sheet music theme and into the home that Elvis inhabited for 20 years, from 1957 to 1977. You'll see, of course, the living room with the famous 15 foot long couch. You'll see his parents' bedrooms. You'll visit the jungle room and other rooms in the mansion. You'll continue under the trophy building while you'll see gold and platinum records, other Presley family mementos, and then we'll visit Elvis's collection of cars and private planes. We'll have some time in the meditation garden to reflect this is where Elvis is buried uh, before we head back to the ship. An optional excursion here in, in Memphis would be the National Civil Rights Museum and the Mason Temple. Uh, this is a period that, uh, you know, many of the seminal moments of the 20th century civil rights history occurred right here in Memphis. Your tour is going to highlight some of those. Uh, the Smithsonian Affiliated National Civil Rights Museum is housed, housed in the site of the Lorraine Motel, which is where Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated in 1968. So the adjoining legacy building features over 260 artifacts and multimedia exhibits that chronicle the five centuries of the civil rights struggle in America. You'll see the nearby Mason Temple, which is home of the Church of God in Christ and the second largest black denomination in the country. And it was here at this temple that Dr. King made his famous, I've been to the mountaintop speech. Day 11 finds us in Greenville, Mississippi. Greenville is Mississippi's largest river port. It sits atop the highest point on the Mississippi River between Vicksburg and Memphis. Its rural setting belies a diverse artistic heritage. The Muppets creator, Jim Henson, was born here and the city has been home to numerous authors, including noted historian Shelby Foote. Greenville is also steeped in the history of blues music. So our included tour is going to take you to Cypress Groves, museums, and the Hebrew Union Temple, which is the, still the largest Jewish congregation in Mississippi. D-12 
12 takes us to Vicksburg, Mississippi. This is also located on a high bluff. This is where the Yazoo River flows into the Mississippi. Vicksburg is the epitome of Southern heritage and charm. It was incorporated in 1825, and with its prime locale on the Mississippi, it grew into a very important port. During the Civil War, Abraham Lincoln called it the key to the South. And a very important battle in the Civil War was fought here, so that's our included tour. We're going to be visiting Vicksburg National Military Park. This is a chance to revisit the battlefield that really turned the tide of the Civil War. Uh, this battle allowed the North to completely control the full Mississippi. The South surrendered to Ulysses S. Grant on July 4th of 1863 and really split the South in half. You'll tour the, with the licensed battlefield guide who will narrate to you, tell you about the historic trenches, markers, and monuments. Uh, you'll see exhibits at the visitor center and learn about the battle of the battle's impact on the lives of the locals, but the civilians who lived here in the area. Day 13 takes us to Natchez, Mississippi. Natchez is one of the highest concentration of historic Southern estates in the country. There are more than 200 perfectly preserved homes along its avenues. It's the oldest city on the Mississippi established in 1716 by French colonists. So our tour here is the best of Natchez. It's a chance to really learn about local history. We'll visit top sites of the city and historic homes. We'll visit St. Mary's Basilica and King's Tavern. We do have an optional excursion here that takes you to the Lansdowne and Joseph Stone House for a concert as well as some local Southern classic cocktails. There'll be a cocktail demonstration as well as tasting. A mixologist will demonstrate how they make their the famous Southern cocktails, the mint julep and others, and maybe give you a taste as well. Day 14 brings us to Baton Rouge. Baton Rouge is the capital of Louisiana. Uh, it is a city that grew due to its location on the river. It's protected by a natural bluff, so flooding did not happen here and was um, founded by French explorers. So our included tour is a Baton Rouge Panorama. You'll see the important sites of the city is the, the Capitol Park Museum. The Capitol here is the tallest state capital at 450 feet tall in the United States. You'll also see Tiger Stadium, home of the LSU Tigers, and the venue can house more than 100,000 fans and is the eighth largest stadium in the world. An optional excursion is the Cajun Heritage Tour. This is a chance to visit the Rural Life Museum that's on campus at Louisiana State University. And this is a chance to step back in time. You'll sample Cajun cuisine, enjoy music, dance performances, and it goes through the 18th and 19th century of of how Louisianas would, Louisianans, which were a blend of French, Spanish, Native American, African, German, and British influences all came together uh, to form this Cajun uh, and Creole culture. Day 15, this is that day that we all uh, do not look forward to when we're cruising. It is time to leave the ship. We've arrived in New Orleans. Our crew will be sad to see you go, but you'll be filled with many memories from a, a very amazing sailing from St. Paul all the way here to New Orleans. While you're in New Orleans, make sure to sample some of the local cuisine, you know, hearty dishes that have bold flavors, creative uses of spices and seafood. You know, regional favorites are gumbo, crawfish etouffee, jambalaya, and po' boy sandwiches that are filled with fried seafood or meat. You have to try some of that before you leave this city. Now, speaking of which, you may want to stay longer, linger longer, um, either come in a little early or stay a little later on either end of your cruise. We have some pre and post packages that have hotels and some tours already included. So let's talk a little bit about those. You see those on uh, now we have the Twin Cities Discovery, which is one night, a chance to arrive one day before your cruise begins and you can explore the Minneapolis, St. Paul area. Uh, on uh, on your own. And then we have cultural capitals, Minneapolis and St. Paul. This is a, a two-night stay that dives a little deeper, gives you a more full-frame picture of Minnesota in Minneapolis and St. Paul. Now you see a 
couple of options of extensions in the southern part of this itinerary. So you could begin these before your journey or after your journey. We have the best of the big easy, which is two nights in New Orleans, giving you more time to explore this great city. I recommend going to the National World War II Museum, one of my favorite museums in the world, right there in New Orleans. The second is called the Best of the Bayou. You head over to Acadian Lafayette, which is really Louisiana's Cajun country and the unofficial capital of that. You'll hear Zydeco music and fantastic Creole and Cajun cuisine here in the Bayou country. Thank you so much for watching today. And we would like to thank the travel advisor that invited you to attend. Thank you.